going to just let you take that in for a minute. Alrighty. So if you haven't watched any of the other videos in this series, this is a hoarder house. And we have done so far the kitchen, the living room and dining room, and now we're into the bathroom. And these were piled up so high and they covered so much of the bathroom floor that I couldn't open the door all the way. I could open it up about two feet and it was just enough for me to squeeze through the door. So my first goal here is to get as many of these picked up around the door area as I can so that I can just at least get the door open so that I can carry the trash bags out to a dumpster. Now at first I thought that these were going to have to be disposed of in biohazard bags and I think in larger cities they probably still would have to be. Where I live you can double bag these and they go straight to the landfill. So what I'm using here is two mil thick 40 gallon contractor bags and I fill one of those up then take it into the other room and double bag it and then throw it out into a dumpster that's out in front of the house. These were so heavy when the bags were halfway full that it was, it was like carrying a full grown human. I think about half a bag full of these three quarters of a bag were easily a hundred to 150 pounds. It took a lot for me to lift them. As you can see in the background, that toilet is completely black and that is a combination of feces, black mold and lime scale. We'll tackle that here in just a few. Now I've gotten enough of these away from the door that for the first time in probably a year, if not longer than that, this door is finally opened all the way. If you're wondering about the smell, there was none because I'm wearing full hazmat gear as well as a respirator. The respirator did a really, really good job of blocking all smells. So how big was that pile? Well, it depends. hi -o! And this is the first time this floor has been uncovered in a really long time too. It was really, really slick because it was all wet. And I'm really shocked that the flooring wasn't more destroyed than it actually was. There's a rug that covered up a piece of plywood and it was so destroyed I just had to get rid of it. I mean, nothing that came in contact with any of this is any good anymore. It's all contaminated. So I threw away rugs, rags, towels, just pretty much everything in this bathroom got tossed. The first thing I'm going to put on this toilet is easy off oven cleaner because it's really good at breaking down organics. So I'm just going to let that eat away at the organics in the toilet for about 15 or 20 minutes. And then we'll scrub that down with a regular toilet brush and then start working our way layer by layer through that mess. Thank you. 
the right hand side of that toilet on the bottom is exactly what you think it is. So we're going to douse that in easy off as well and let that set for probably a good 15 minutes. The first thing I'm going to do to the floor is douse that in Lysol, mixed it 10 times its normal strength. And then this is going to look like I'm trying to mop this up. It's not really mopping as much as it is just smearing around puddles of Lysol. Then we're going to let that sit on the floor for as long as we can. I think I let it sit there for close to a half hour. Then I'll take a scraper and get up chunks of unmentionables and then finish basically dirty slop mopping the floor. All right, so we're gonna go back to the toilet and use the toilet brush to get off as much of the outer organic layer as we can. Then after we flush, I'm gonna use a plunger to force water through the trap and reduce the water level as much as I can so that whenever I come back and put the uh, Clorox toilet cleaner on it and that has bleach in it, it can stick below the water line. I let that set for about 15 minutes or so, and then I scrubbed it down and then re-doused it again. So right now we're working with um, basically straight stained lime scale, but I still want that bleach to work on that as much as possible. Then while that's working, I'm gonna mop the floor again with um, Lysol. Now this is not sanitized yet. All I'm trying to do here is give myself some area to work where I'm not stepping on five levels of nasty. Okay, now while that's drying, I'm gonna go to the sink and start clearing that up with just Mr. Clean. I'm gonna use Mr. Clean to get the main crud off, and then I'm gonna go back over that with a mixture of isopropyl alcohol, water, and Dawn dish soap, and that's what I'm gonna use to sanitize it. It also has the added benefit of making it shine. It's, alcohol's really, really good at shining up things like porcelain and, and faucets. The mixture that I'm using is 91% isopropyl alcohol. Um, about 10 to 20% of that bottle is filled with that. Then the other 90 to 80% is filled with water and like three or four drops of Dawn dish soap. I'm gonna wash the mirror using that same mixture of alcohol, soap, and water. And the bathroom at this point is sanitized enough 
to where I no longer need the protective gear. Uh, what you saw leading up to the mirror in the sink, um, I think that was about three, three and a half hours that I spent in that suit in order to make the bathroom at least sanitized enough to where I could switch to an N95 mask and gloves. Then I'll switch to paper towels on the toilet uh, in order to get the main gunk off and then I can switch to other implements of cleaning destruction after that. Now I'll take the toilet brush and go over this one more time. And I've gotten pretty much, well, not pretty much, I've gotten all the organics off of it now. We're working with just straight limestone that's been stained. Or I say limestone, it's lime scale. It's not big chunks of limestone. <laughs> Now I'm gonna spray the whole toilet down with Mr. Clean and let that set for a bit and then use the plunger trick again to force the water through the trap, lowering the water level so I can get more cleaner onto that actual lime scale. If you ever wonder why I use Mr. Clean, watch the underside of that toilet seat, how much that cleans that up. That's absolutely crazy. She needs a new toilet seat, but she, she actually needs a whole new toilet. The, the bottom of this thing on both sides, the base is broken. Um, the toilet seat is just old and not useful anymore. Um, and they are going to replace that. So I'm going to take Power Paste, which is a Scrub Daddy product, and I'm going to use a Scrub Mommy to see how much of this I can get off of there before I start adding more chemicals. Don't worry, I throw the Scrub Mommy away. Also, I'm not dipping the Scrub Mommy back into the Power Paste. I'm just scooping up some Power Paste with my hand and putting it on the, the sponge thingy. She's all like, oh no, not on my face. And I'm like, you suck it. Eat power paste. Now I'm going to use one of my favorite products, which is Lime Away, and I'm going to douse that like it stole something. And then while that's sitting, again for about 15-20 minutes, I want to move on to other parts of the bathroom. So I'm going to spray down the sink pedestal looking thing with Mr. Clean, and then just clean that with a paper towel. Normally I use microfiber towels for all this, but this is so cruddy that like if you use a microfiber towel on these initial wipe downs, you're going to be able to use the towel for like one wipe and then it gets so dirty that I'd just be wasting rags. So I'm getting the main crud off with paper towels and then doing polish cleaning with uh, microfiber. Now here you can see where that toilet is broken. You can see it goes right across that post and then right up to the uh, P-trap. The other side is the same exact way. It's been shifted while it was being sat on and it just snapped it. She's very lucky that there's no leaks and it's actually one of the reasons that I don't clean those cracks really well because there's a very good chance, as gross as this sounds, that all the nasty crud that's on there is actually preventing water from coming out the side of that. Now I'll continue cleaning up the bottom part of this toilet with Mr. Clean until I get it down to a respectable level. And then I'm switching to the alcohol mixture so that I can help sanitize that. Yeah, this stuff was really, really on there.
<laughs> Poop. All right, now that the outside of the toilet's done, I'm gonna clean the baseboards and the walls, and that's just with straight Mr. Clean. Now, everything in here, whether it's shown on camera or not, everything is finished off with the alcohol mixture because I don't trust anything in this bathroom to be sanitary or even remotely clean without using alcohol on it. And e here in a few, we're even gonna use bleach on the floor and the baseboards. Now, I don't do the bathtub in this because the bathtub is full-blown shattered. It's got like, I don't even know, man, like 25 cracks in it. That's gonna have to be taken out and replaced, so I just left it alone. This window has gotten, they had just scotch taped the bottom part of that window frame together and it's got one nail holding it in, but the nail's really loose. So as I'm cleaning it, it falls off and then I pick it up like I meant to do that. <laughs> like, like it's easier to clean if I'm holding it in my hand. So I just continued to clean it off and then just pushed it back in there as best I could. If I would have had a hammer and nails with me, which I usually do, I would have just nailed that back up, but I, I don't. Windows are cleaned with the alcohol mixture, and then I just dry that off with an ultra-fine microfiber towel, and that gets rid of any streaks. Then these light covers are just cleaned with Mr. Clean and a rag. There was evidently an earthquake going on or something. I don't know. Oh, I know what it was. My tripod is like six feet tall. So if you walk anywhere near it, it shakes and makes everything look like the world's imploding. Now we'll go back to the toilet, which I think was the name of Metallica's last album. And we'll scrub this down with a scrub mommy. And remember this had Lime Away sitting on it. And this takes off quite a bit. We'll flush it. And then we'll do the plunger trick one more time. And then we're gonna redouse that with Lime Away really soak it down and let it sit while I'm doing the rest of the bathroom. So we'll switch to the doors and the door frames and that's all done with just Mr. Clean. I use a little um, non-scratch scouring pad to get rid of all this, like that black stuff up there is actually black mold and insect feces and then I clean it right in its stupid face. Suck it mold. Then after I'm done scrubbing that, I just wipe it down with a microfiber cloth and it gets rid of all the gunk and turns it back into as white as it can be considering its condition.
If you're wondering why I'm starting at the bottom of this door and working my way up rather than starting from the top and working down, it's mainly because it doesn't matter at all. This thing is so trashed that I end up having to, to wash it down like three times. So it doesn't matter if the stuff that I'm wiping off on top runs down onto the stuff that I've already cleaned, I have to wipe it all down again anyway. I don't show that on camera because it would be really boring watching me wash a door like three, four times in a row. <laughs> But trust me, I did, and I've got the sore arm to prove it. Some more black mold and some more suck it. All right, now that the doors are done, I'm gonna use a Scrub Mommy again on the Lime Away that we've had sitting on there for a bit. And then I'm going to use, I think I use a scraper right after this. Nope, just gonna dump in a crap load of CLR. In fact, I'm gonna dump a full bottle of that in there. I'm gonna let that sit uh, for a long time. I think I let that set for about 20 minutes. And then I'm gonna take a scraper to it, a paint scraper. You can see that scraper is making little marks in the toilet. That doesn't actually matter. Those will just buff right out. Plus, I mean, I'm, I'm washing a ruined toilet, so I'm not all that concerned if it gets a couple scrapes in it. Now the only thing I don't worry about here is the very interior of that bottom. I got everything off except for that. And if I wanted to, I could dump some CLR in there and just let that sit overnight and that would all soften up and come out. But I'm, I'm not really concerned about it. Again, they're gonna be replacing the toilet and the bathtub. And in fact, they're gonna be remodeling this entire room. Her daughter's coming in to remodel it. Um, like right there where that little plywood is or particle board. I don't remember what you call it. Uh, there's a hole in the floor underneath that where water is set for so long. It just basically ate a hole right through the floor. That's what the rug was covering up, but I mean, there's no way I'm putting that rug back in there. Then I'm gonna start wrapping up the room by cleaning her trash cans. And then I'm gonna spray that alcohol mixture into it to help just kill off anything that's in there. And I don't wipe that out, I just let it stay because alcohol will evaporate on its own pretty quickly. So I'll just let that sit in there and eat, eat stuff away. Now I'm mopping the floor with bleach. And this is about 10% bleach and 90% water. And that will kill off anything that remained on the floor. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, it would be awesome if you did. I don't really care about the subscriber numbers, but as I mentioned in my last video, I think it'd be fun to freak out my kids' friends if I had a YouTube plaque. Hope you were grossed out and I'll see you on the next one.